So this is a typical scenario. We actually get our gut flora from our mothers. So when the baby is passing through the vaginal canal, the baby's born with a sterile gut. When it passes through the vaginal canal, it picks up a lot of the mucus. The mucus in the um, vagina is exactly the same as in the gut. Um, so if the mother has a dysbiosis, an imbalance of bacteria in the gut, um, it'll also be the case in the vagina. And when the baby passes through and picks up that mucus, it gets into the mouth and starts nestling down into the um, bowels. And then when the baby gets the first colostrum, which is very, very sweet, high in sugars, that starts to feed that bacteria and that's how they start to grow. So a typical scenario which leads to a lot of the um, problems that we're seeing today is that um, the mother has gut dysbiosis, which if you think about it, if they've started the contraceptive pill as a teenager, they've had courses of antibiotics, um, they've had exposure to pollution, they've had you know, exposure to fizzy drinks and sugar and things like that, it's actually not very difficult to create um, a, a woman of my generation in particular um, who sort of started on this track with an imbalance of bacteria. So this is a very, very common um, problem. So when the baby passes through and gets this abnormal bacteria, it doesn't develop the healthy flora. Um, and then its immune system is compromised. Because as I said, um, the immune system is primarily regulated by the, the gut flora. So if there's an imbalance there, the immune system is compromised. So the baby has a compromised immune system, so it becomes more susceptible to ear infections, of course, which, re which um, according to medical establishment, usually requires antibiotics, several courses. Um, and then they become more immune compromised, and then they often get chest infections, which again lead to antibiotics. Um, so there's further damage to the gut flora and the immune system. And most of our children are also vaccinated, which can also affect um, the gut flora and compromise the immune system even more. Um, more so in children that have this issue. Healthy children um, don't have too much of an issue with vaccination, but children with a compromised immune system will. And then of course there's the usual weaning diet of grains and sugars and processed milk, which all feed um, the pathogenic bacteria. So we have a child that has a gut dysbiosis. And um, with this gut dysbiosis, of course, there's more toxicity that's created because the detoxification system um, isn't working effectively. And with this toxicity, often the brain is affected. And this is what is resulting. These childhood epidemics, um, these are statistics from Australia. Allergies affect now one in four, asthma one in six, eczema one in five, digestive problems one in seven, obesity one in five mental illness one in ten, but at any one time throughout a child's life it, it will affect one in seven. So one in seven children will at some time in their life be affected by some kind of mental illness. Learning difficulties one in six, ADD and ADHD one in ten, autism one in 88. Twenty years ago it was one in ten thousand and the latest research from the CDC has shown that in some parts of Australia, the US and the UK it's now one in 88, which is pretty frightening. And a lot of people say, oh, it must just be better diagnosis. But if that was the case, that would mean that 20 years ago, doctors were so inept at diagnosing a child that had these issues. And that's simply not the case. Our doctors were still very intelligent and very capable 20 years ago. Um, sure, a small part of it is diagnosis, but a greater part of it is this, um, this underlying, um, these underlying issues which is really creating the problems. Um, behavioral problems, one in six. So they're pretty frightening to statistics um, and it's only getting worse in the UK that's um, they're probably um, have one of the the worst um, situations um, in the Western world now only one in ten school children are not diagnosed with something so 90 um, uh, percent of 90 children um, are actually have some kind of diagnosis and and they usually fall into these epidemics so it's very, very frightening, but on the other hand, with the knowledge and, and the experience um, that we're gaining, it's also very empowering because there's a lot we can do about it. This isn't just our fate, it's, just not, it's not just bad luck. Um, we create it, but we can also prevent it. And that's what the really exciting thing is. 